from Mark's Gospel. Master, it is well that we are here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I like the disciples' optimism in the face of absolute terror. I think it is an emblem of courage and of faith, a harbinger of the joy that would come after a long Lent and a bitter passion. And I believe an emblem for how we might look at life at this point in our society, at this point in our world's history, at this point in this pandemic, at this point in our personal lives. Master, it is well that we are here. The disciples said to Jesus, who had taken two of the favorite, three of the favorite, Peter, James, and John, apart from the others, to pray. And there they saw Jesus like they'd never seen him before. On the mountain, transfigured, glimmering white, as the words of the gospel say, whiter than any fuller's bleach could make them. And they saw Moses and Elijah either side of Jesus, the law, and the prophets, and Jesus, in other words, the embodiment on whom hung both the law and the prophets, as the summary of the law says in the communion service. What were they to make of that? Mark notes, they were exceedingly afraid. And instead of acting on that fear, instead of being paralyzed by that fear, I really do rather love it. Peter said to Jesus, elsewhere in the Gospels, Peter is known for often being wrong, but never in doubt. He says what he thinks, and yet he's frequently prophetic and absolutely correct in what he says. He says, master it as well that we are here. It's terrible that they're there. It's terrifying that they're, it's frightening that they are there, but he gets it. Master, it is well that we are here. And yet his instinct was to make three boots so that the place that it was well that they were could become a permanent residence. This is the instinct when we find a place in life, either physically or emotionally or spiritually or relationally, that feels good. We want to freeze it in time. We want to bronze it like a baby boot. We want to put it in so that it is always visible and always unchanged. Well, this is not the reality because we never can. Because once we bronze the baby boot, we can never wear it to cover our feet again. Once we put the gold coin that was given to us on our 21st birthday in loose sight, we can never spend it. Once we make booths on top of the mountain in the presence of Jesus and Moses and Elijah, we can never go down the hill. We can never go into the city. We can never experience the passion of the Christ. We can never experience the joy of the resurrection and the new life, which would spread to 2 billion people in 2021, known as the way of faith. We're stuck in the midst of COVID and it's terrible. 
And yet I just saw Boris Johnson on Sky News tell me that 15 people, million people in the United Kingdom have had their first jab. A full quarter of the United Kingdom have been inoculated to a certain degree. I bet Mrs. Curry, you've had your first jab. Well done, madam. I bet your husband has as well. Excellent. There are two Britons who've had it. I bet some of you have had it. I know Mrs. Graham has had it because I spoke to Mary. You've had both. Excellent. Well, you've done well. Encourage everyone who can to do it because once we're all inoculated, life will begin in our new stance of abundant caution to become, I won't say normal again, but I will say better again, because when they left that mountaintop, it wasn't normal. It was changed, but it was better. And so I encourage each of us, whether that mountaintop is joyful or horrible, because sometimes it's both at the same time, as it clearly was for Peter. Don't bronze it. Don't put it in lucite. Don't try to make it permanent. Take what is wonderful about it, take what is instructive about it, and go down from the mountain and live your lives anew, changed, inspired by it. I look at the faces on gallery view on my desk, and I know each of you, some of you for three months, some of you for three weeks, some of you for 30 years, and I know that your lives have been changed by Jesus Christ. Be open to him changing your life today, as only he can in the breaking of bread at this table, which if a man eat it, he will not perish, but will live for life eternal. Master, it is well that we are here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.